Hello, welcome to the new podcast series, King of the Middle, with Michael Joel Green and Chris Moore. Here's Michael Green. Welcome to King of the Middle, a podcast dedicated to faith and creativity, uh, striving for excellence in both. I'm Michael, this is Chris, and we are delighted tonight to have as a guest, Mr. Lawrence Stallings. Hello, everybody. Lawrence and I met on a buddy's film shoot probably two and a half or so years ago and hit it off right away. And then through the course of having lunch and hanging out, we discovered that uh, not only did we share passion for creativity, but we also shared a common faith um, in the Lord. And it led to one of the most uh, enriching friendships that I that I have. and. I've been blessed by his friendship for the last few years, and we wanted him to come on and talk about his his life, his work, his passions, his family, his faith. Lawrence is an actor. Uh, we'll let him tell you all about that. But we are delighted to have you, my brother. Thank you. Welcome Thank you to the King of the Middle podcast. Absolutely. Those are kind words, Michael. Kind words. Uh, I feel exactly the same way, brother. You are um, such a sweet, awesome, spirit uh, a, a true man of god and 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 you're a light brother and you've been a light in my life so thank you thank you for that so lawrence for those that don't know you tell us about yourself your acting how you started out with this yeah um so i've been doing this for a while really um i am from detroit michigan and represent detroit and uh i have spent the last what like 10 15 years now between New York and Los Angeles uh, after graduating from Temple and uh, just just trying to, you know, live that live the dream, you know, being an actor kind of you, you're flying by the seat of your pants most of the time. And I started off pretty young doing this in Detroit, uh, not professionally, of course, you know, at that age, like five, six years old, you're performing in in church, you're performing in school and uh, you know, as I grew up, I always knew that um, I always knew I wanted to be an artist, you know, whether I was singing or acting or, or dancing or whatever. I knew that that performing was was my calling. And uh, yeah, so I pursued that. And uh, after I graduated from Temple, I decided, you know, it's sink or swim time. So I took a job that I knew was going to leave me homeless at the end of three months. And that was going to force me to go to New York and, 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 and try it. And, you know, all glory to God, I have been able to pretty much live as an actor since I graduated from college. So that's been, that's been a, um, that's something that is not everyone's journey, you know, and don't get me wrong. There are definitely times where like, you know, you're in, you're in the lean time, you know, but for the last five or six years um, with all of the transitions of life, I've been able to kind of hang on. And that's been that's been something that I definitely attribute to to the Lord. I want to I'd like to ask you, Lawrence. So in the first few podcasts that Mike and I have talked with, we talked a lot about the passion to be an artist, but also where we cross that line with our families, where it's like we're driven to be an artist and this is really all we want to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you ever have struggles with survival surviving doing the art and, mm -hmm. and being an actor but also looking and saying boy everybody i know who i grew up around or people that i've met over the years that i've known who were not artists or people who were and then they stopped they've all got more stabilized lives mm -hmm. than i do yeah, and, yeah yeah and it's something with mike and i that this is something that we're we're trying to figure this out that's part of what we're doing this podcast is yeah yeah what, what's your reaction to that because we don't have an answer it, it's somewhat <laughs> madness uh yeah i mean <laughs> yes is my answer to all of that um no yeah i um you know whenever i go home i'm kind of confronted with this alternate reality this reality of like i have friends who kind of you know, follow the, the path that's more traditional. They they got out of school, you know, maybe they went away to school, but they ended up back home. They found jobs um, and they started families and, you know, they have homes and, you know, they're living that life. And there are times that we've had conversations about that. And, you know, and it's like, man, you have a house like 
Um, I'm living in a studio here. I currently have like a studio in LA and a studio in New York City, which is a blessing, but they're studios, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, you have a house, you have a backyard, you have grass. And, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> man. And you start these conversations and inevitably they begin to talk about, yeah, but like you're pursuing your dream and mm-hmm. and you've traveled the world and you, you know, so I've started to try to compare less because you know the grass is truly always greener you know and what i envy um in people who have chosen a more traditional path um is the opposite of what they're looking at my life and i shouldn't say envy but what i look at and and go man i don't have that yet um they're looking at me and they're going well but i wish i had done that and i wish i had pursued that uh, so that's where the balance kind of is, you know, yeah. uh, when I look at the fact that I don't have um, a garage like attached to my house to drive into, I kind of go, yeah, but I've, I've seen the world and, and I'm, and I'm kind of free in that I don't have to punch a nine to five. And, uh, that makes me really, really happy. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting is it seems like we're always covetous of what the other person has, even Absolutely. if we're doing the art. It's like, I wish, and then they tell us, boy, I wish, and I've heard that from my fa- some of my family members over the years too, like, oh, I wish you had done that. I had done what you did. And it's it's interesting. It's good hearing perspective beyond our own. I once, <laughs> we're not I once the had a ones. friend tell me, I, I, I will never forget this. I was standing outside in New York City and, and maybe I had just had a really bad audition or something like that. And she walked up to me and and she could tell by the look on my face that something wasn't right. And, you know, as an actor, we are constantly comparing ourselves to other people, you know, um, especially like every uh, medium is different. But like in New York, when you're chasing the Broadway dream, you know, when you audition, you can hear you, like you're in a waiting room and you're hearing 15, 16 people go in and, and, and showcase their talent. And the only thing separating you from them is like this wall. And so it was really easy to compare. Oh, I don't sound like that. Or they sound great, blah, blah, blah. And so I was having one of those moments after an audition and she walked up to me and she kind of like, like, like pushed away something that was over my shoulder. And she was like, do not compare yourself to other people. She was like, it's an act of violence. And I was like, I will never forget that because it that resonated with me because was, we never compare ourselves for the good. We never look at someone and go, that person is really articulate. And I'm articulate too. We're two articulate people. No, we always go, you know, that person is really articulate. I don't sound that articulate, whatever. And so when she said that, I thought about it. It's like when we're comparing, when we compare ourselves, whether it's career, the family lifestyle, whatever, it's like punching ourselves in the face, you know? And uh, I try my best not to beat myself up in that way. Um, after she said that to me, I kind of added as an act of violence to yourself. Like it, it truly is, it can be a violent act because that one seed of comparison can trip you and you will fall down a rabbit hole of insecurity and, 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 and just not feeling like you're enough in a in an instant you know so yeah I, I try to keep that in check as much as possible it is it is uh, uh the lord's work i tell you but <laughs> i try to i try to keep that uh, in check yeah yeah I, I was i think on one of the probably the second podcast i think we did i i i told the story about a woman in one of my acting classes years ago who i think she had just turned 30 and i mean she was strong i mean she could have been a cop you know district attorney you know she had that strength and her agent would keep sending her out for these 21 year old kind of you know scantily dressed roles and uh i remember i I saw her on an audition one time i was actually doing going out for the same show and i could just see it in her eyes like her confidence was completely shot and you could tell she would go into a depression for weeks after that and i was just i just kept thinking you know you have such an amazing strength and you're allowing that self-judgment or um comparison 
to get so much in your head and and i it took me years and i i still struggle with it so yeah it's it's, it's a difficult thing especially as a creative you know especially because it's a subjective field i mean everything is subjective so you're you're constantly trying to prove yourself um and the interesting thing is is that is where like your faith if you have one whatever it is comes in because if your entire self-worth is based on what the feedback you're getting in this business whatever kind of creative you are it's, it's a dangerous thing you know that's a very dangerous thing to add to what you guys are saying there's a risk of when my self-esteem gets knocked down like i'm not as good as this guy i become hypercritical yeah towards everyone else and what happens is that's two things one i become hypercritical and dismissive of other people's work and that's sin that is wrong and it's not helpful i'm not supporting other people whether they're right. believers or not but then the second thing that happens is the the side i don't know what you'd call it the 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 result of that is hypercritical against myself and now i can't do anything that's good enough i can't do anything that's good enough that's worthwhile and i won't I can't meet my potential that, that God with the gifts that he's given me because I'm constantly stopping down saying, what are people going to think? They're going to be really hypercritical. And for years, I was stuck in traps where I wouldn't release anything that I did. Um, when I when I went to grad school, I, I did a student film that I actually shot right after graduation, but I never released it. It was like a 20 minute film and I did and I put a tremendous amount of work in, but I was so concerned about what people would think about it, that it wasn't going to, wasn't that good, that I never released it. And that was the younger me who happened to, I, I actually operated that way for a very long time, many, many years. And it's, so there are many dangers and, and I, I really like what you said, Lawrence, though, about push that off. It's, it's yeah. wrong and it's evil and get it. It is brush it away because it's way, very destructive in so many it's ways. very destructive yeah and i have suffered uh greatly you know uh, mm. for uh, from a lack of self-confidence you know because mm. of that you know because of years and years of of comparing myself to others and not feeling adequate and um yeah it it, it is destructive and then and then you do the hard work of building that confidence back up and you know it's always better to like build from a place where like you're where like you have a foundation but after years and years of comparing yourself to other people and allowing what people think of you to tear you down you can find yourself really standing without a foundation and the work to build that back up it's it can be herculean at times you know i've definitely <laughs> felt felt that you know um but you, yeah. you do the work, you press on, <laughs> you know, in faith that mm -hmm. one day, one day, mm -hmm. you know, I think mm -hmm. every year I'm like, Lord, I, I'm leaving self doubt and all of that, you know, I'm leaving it behind. Mm -hmm. And every year I get a little bit better, but I, you know, it's, it's my life's work, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? I was, I, a, a question came to mind when you were saying that Lawrence, which is what does, what does success look for you? for you what where would you say ah oh, yeah okay this is i feel god you put me where you have me where mm. you wanted me to be so where what does that look like <laughs> <laughs> you know it, yeah because it's like i have this uh i have this picture of like all of my desires fulfilled and then i have like this other image of like the stuff that matters right and 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 so i know that like i know that that's what true success is. And honestly, I think for me, it is operating within my gift, being allowed to operate within my gift, being confident that that is a God-given gift and able to use that freely and, and support my family, you know, and be able to continue to love people and, and not worry about uh, things like, finance and, and 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 job security and all of those things like that that to me is success and what i'm learning is is that how god does that looks different for everybody you know some people are like well if i'm a millionaire then i'm not worried about finance and i'm wor not worried about job security and yes that that is definitely a road and a path and dear lord if that is your will for my life i will accept <laughs> that um but but he has shown me time and time again that uh provision does not necessarily come in big bank accounts 
you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, security does not come in booking that job that is gonna, you know, that's just not how he operates because there is a, everybody has, everybody is in a different place in their faith. For me, the thing that will make me just sit back and relax and go, ah, finally, God never does. <laughs> He mm -hmm. never does it like that for me, <laughs> you know. He all he always nope. keeps me having to trust that he will provide the next step. You know, even if the the, the previous step was a nice big step, it's never quite that step that just allows me to kind of go. Uh, the circumstances of this step now I can relax. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, just relax and trusting me. Just relax and knowing that I got the next step. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I think that's what success is for me. You know. Mm being able to trust that no matter what, God's got me. Mm. Yeah. I'd love to ask you, and then I'll let Mike ask some more questions, but yeah, yeah. have you ever found yourself going for a part that you were wondering, that, that there was a little bit of internal dissonance about, should I be involved in this project? Oh, did, have you ever landed a project where you're on something? I started landing on bigger projects where I could go, ooh, I could like, be like, ah, oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting higher places, but there then there became issues with the morals of being a right. Christian and being in the world, generating content that has a worldview that said that opposes God, and and this is what the purpose of this content is yeah. to entertain people with a worldview that is absolutely not right. what God wants. So I'm wondering if you ever had any experiences. Oh my goodness, like have that. I have I ever? <laughs> and you know, this is actually like the best part of this conversation for me because. Mm -hmm. Um, navigating this industry as a believer is is tricky. It's it's very very tricky. Um, everybody has their 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 boundaries. Everybody has their own personal convictions, and some people's are way further ahead than others, and some people's are like so close to them. And I've I have a lot of friends that are believers, and you know there are things that they're just like absolutely like I'm never doing that. And then I sometimes wonder like, am I? Am I like really loose with 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 my <laughs> with my boundaries? But what I've learned over the years is that it takes all kinds to get this good news out. And God has to use us. You know, ever since I was a little kid, and I'll get to exactly what I mean, um, there has been this kind of acknowledgement by strangers, uh, people in my family, but mostly strangers that um that there's that there's some kind of calling on my life that is is not um like is, that is like ministerial right and it has it has scared me frankly and and bothered me um growing up because i'm like well no i'm like i'm supposed to be an actor you know i've had like pastors who don't even know me point to me in a congregation of thousands and and say like there is something on your life and then it finally began to hit me that ministering um is life's work it's 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 like what we do daily right um it doesn't have to be from a pulpit and so i kind of finally began to surrender to that like god if you want to use my life as a ministry and you want to get get your good news out there then i surrender and a bonus if you let me do it in this in this industry and what i started to understand was that God, yes, we need to have, um, we need to follow the leading of the spirit, right? And and there are things that God puts on us that are convictions, and we need to hear that. But I'm telling you, I am, um, I am now a believer that when God says go, you have to go. And sometimes where he sends you is not where you think you're going. So to answer your question, that was all of that. Um, the last job that I had on Broadway was in a, a little musical that didn't get a lot of attention called The Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about this show, or if you know anything about its creators, the, the creators of, of South Park um, mm -hmm. uh, created the show. And true story, I started watching South Park and I would never forget, I was watching an episode and they had Jesus and the devil in a wrestling match. And I was like, nope, not for me. Like, I'm not watching this show, you know? And like, I know what the show is. And I was just like, that, that was a little bit much for me. So I changed the channel. Cut to years later, I, I was put in this show. And I say I was put in this show because I turned this audition down three times. And 
when I finally was convinced to go into this audition, I went in with an attitude. Um, I think I spit on the reader accidentally. Like it was like one of those auditions where I was like, I would rather be anywhere else than here. And I was like, I'm clearly not going to get cast in this show. And then I get cast in this workshop. <laughs> then I go to my first day of rehearsal and we start learning a song that is probably, no, not probably, the most irreverent thing that I have ever done in life. And I just could not understand how God was allowing me to be in this room. So much so that I was like, I can't do this show. Like, I can't do this, this show. Uh, the day after our last day of the workshop, when I knew that my time in the Book of Mormon was going to come to an end, I, I felt like they were going to uh, move on without me. And the day after, my agent calls and he's like, you just got an unofficial offer to Broadway in this show. And I was like, you got to be kidding me, right? So I'm having a conversation with God about this. And I heard him clearly say, did you want to audition for this show? I said, no. He said, did you fight not to be in the show? I said, yes. He said, and yet, how easy was it for you to book this, your next Broadway job? This is me. If you trust me, go where I send you. And I went and I did this show for three years. And I kid you not, God used me in every kind of way hmm. to crew people in that theater, to people who worked in the front of house. I was um, stretching one day and this guy who works, he would, he would um, pass out the, the headsets for people who couldn't hear. And I never stretched in, in the house before the show opened. I always did it on stage. And this one day I was in the house and he came up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder and I took out my headphones. And he was like, hey, brother, I'm sorry to bother you. I know you're in the show. And um, he was like, listen, I am a, um, a graphic t-shirt designer. And then he paused and he said, I'm a Christian graphic t-shirt designer. And I have these shirts that I would love to get the whole cast to sign. Is there any way you can help me? Now, there are. 40 people in this building that are in the show circulating around. And this brother comes to me and I, he has these t-shirts that say like Jesus simply amazing on them and, and other things. And I'm going through and believers and non-believers, people who could care less about what's on the actual t-shirt are like signing it because I'm asking them to, because this guy, you, you know, and so the whole experience just taught me that, um, God needs people to go in all different types of areas and he'll never send you in an area where you're not going to be able to do his work. And that was a big learning lesson for me because my church that I was going to was two blocks from that theater. And I used to be really, really nervous that someone would see me in the show. And then I would remind myself that I was placed in that show for a crew member who was on drugs. And one day just right in the middle of the show was like, Hey, brother, pray for me. And I had never said I believed in God or anything like that. He just knew to ask me. And it was those moments that I was like, this is bigger than me. This is bigger than me. So that's that's kind of where I am about like the morals and things. Of course, I have my own personal convictions and I definitely have things that I feel like I would not be a benefit to the kingdom doing. But I also have this... Um, other working knowledge that like God needs to use his people as he needs to use them. And there are people in this business who are hurting and they, they need to be ministered to by people that they can identify with people who speak their language, you know, and that's us, that's the creatives, you know? And so I have, it's a, it's an ongoing conversation. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think in my experience, I don't have a story as great as that, but I've run into some people working on shows where there's not a Christian to be found mm -hmm. in most things. But I've had people where I've had a chance to talk to them about prayer and somebody I worked with years ago, this guy's sister was dying and I just said, I'm going to be praying for you. And he wound up going to see her and he said, you know, she hadn't been religious, but she suddenly on her deathbed wanted to hear wanted the Bible read to us. Absolutely. And I was like, man, I I was praying and I'm still praying for you. And it's 
it's not that there's a conversion experience. This person doesn't become a believer. Although one time I was working with somebody and shared with a guy and he wound up going back to church so, wow. um, and, and, for, for some time. So yeah, amazing things happen out there in the wilderness, in yeah. the secular wilderness as an artist. Yep. So that's a beautiful story. Yeah, so Lawrence, your wife is also an actor and a performer. So, and mm -hmm. you just had your first child. The baby is seven months now. Yes. Adorable, cute as a button. Seven months. Um, what is that? What Thank is that you. like God did to God did one it. be married to another another actor, and then also mm -hmm. how to, having your having your first child? How has that changed things? Well, you know, twenty twenty has been very very interesting to be an artist and also to be a parent. Um, but, you know, I used to say a long time ago that I wouldn't want to date another actor. Um, and that was misguided because only someone in this profession can truly understand what it takes to be in this profession. And the beautiful thing about my wife, Q Smith, uh, is that she loves me. She loves God and she loves being an artist and she loves pursuing her dream and she loves me pursuing my dream. And, and so I really think we make an awesome team in that because we support each other 1000%. And, you know, after we started dating, cause we were friends for a long time, we started dating and we talked about marriage and starting a family. We always said only one of us could not be pursuing the dream at a time. So if, you know, if we had a child and someone had to like come out of it to kind of get, you know, a real job and, and support the family. Only one of us can do it at a time because we really believe that happy people make happy spouses, make happy parents, right? And we wanted to make sure that we are pursuing um, the thing that God wanted us to pursue and not wrapped up in, you know, oh my God, how are we going to provide? Because God is ultimately provision. And man, if he hasn't taught us that this year, you know, my son was born January 7th. We went on a... a a global shutdown, you know, a couple of months later, and I was already unemployed. And my wife, who was in a Broadway show, started her maternity leave last October. So if you if you count up those months, it it's coming up on a year for her that she's been without a job. And it's absolutely a year for me. And God has provided so much this year that we have not worried about how we're going to provide for our child you know we kind of trusted god you know we were like if if it's in god's will to have a baby he will he will allow that to happen he allowed that and so it's it's been a journey you know um we often think about how our lives are going to shift and change as he gets older but right now he is uh young enough to kind of just go with the flow so like we picked up and left new york and came to california because i had a place here and her show is shut down and we were like why not let's let's truly be by coastal and he's not in school or anything like that so we are able to do that so we're having fun and also we're gonna make him work you know somebody's got to book some work you know and so he's so good looking you know my commercial agent is already on it she's like let's do this so so you took uh i know that you made a you took it was a long trip from one coast to the other and you took you stopped and saw family yeah we decided to one, drive yeah one highlight as re as it re regards uh caleb the baby on that road trip we took him to the sand dunes, the great national sand dunes in uh, Colorado, like right on the border of Colorado, going into uh, New Mexico. And he, that was his first time touching sand. And he just kind of put his feet in the sand and looked up at us. And, you know, he was a really, really good traveler too. I have to say the whole trip was a highlight. I mean, of course he would get fussy, you know, if we drove like eight, nine hours, but for the most part, he just kind of was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm riding with you guys, you know? And, you know, we had that car packed like the Griswolds, you know, like it was like packed to the brim. We had a minivan and we took off and it took us two weeks, but we made it. And um, we celebrated him every step of the way. Like we, we often catch ourselves, me and my wife, we're like, there's a human in the backseat that belongs to us, you know? And, 
the love of God, man, when you are when you become a parent, and Chris, you you know this, like you truly know how God loves you because you feel that for your child. And I knew that I, I'd heard people say it and and you prepare for it, but it's still, it's like something opens up inside of you that you did not even know was mm-hmm. capable of opening up. And it really does reflect back to me. It's like, I hear God every once in a while going, you see how much you love him? Like, that's how much mm-hmm. I love you. When you're beating yourself up, that's how much I love you. You know, when you miss the mark, that's how much I love you. You know, when you want him to have everything uh, that that this life can offer him, you know, mm-hmm. it, that's how much I love you. And it really has mm-hmm. helped. It's and helped my faith a lot. Because oh, no, I know- I was just going to say, when you see ahead, that your no. child doesn't do what you want your kid to do, which is going to happen more and more as your son gets older, you say, oh, I see what right, grace right. is, right, right. how God's grace has worked in my life, including yeah. in my art, art career as an yeah, artist yeah. when I didn't do things that he probably wanted me to do. Is like, I'm going to let you go your own wrong way, and then you're going right, to come right, back right. and- <laughs> And mm-hmm, you start mm-hmm. to learn more about grace and about yep. how how you want your child to love you. You don't want it. you can't force your child to love you. You wouldn't want that. So when you see <clears throat> the father, mm-hmm. it's pretty incredible when you see how oh I'm starting to see how he works with us and his love that he wants us to love him. He's yeah. not going to force us to do anything, and that really plays into our lives as artists when we've done things right and we when we've had missteps that he's given us the ability yeah. to, to yeah, yeah. he's loves us and has carried us through and as long as we've held on to him it's like even our mistakes he's like i still love you come back and i will i will be there for you and i suspect our lives with our kids will be like that absolutely um as they grow older into adulthood yeah. they'll always be welcome back because i look at him now and i think you know i might not like everything you do but i look at him and i'm like already seven months there is nothing you Mm -hmm. could do that would make me stop loving you and like we know that as non-parents uh we 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 fight to believe Mm -hmm. that though i think we fight to believe that sometimes but when you become a parent now you have this direct um Mm -hmm. correlation right and you know how you're feeling as a parent. And so if you're able to like, uh, you know, um, uh, attribute those feelings to, to your heavenly father, mm-hmm. then you know, he's got mm-hmm. your back no matter what everything, even like my wife, I love her. I say unconditionally, but like I'm human. And I know that there are certain things that would be deal breakers. <laughs> You know, I don't know what those are, but I, I think in your mind, you 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 go, I do. I love this person unconditionally and, and, I, and I want to be with them forever. And that's the choice I'm making. But I think somewhere in the back of your mind, mm. there's a like there's a but, you know, mm-hmm. and everybody's butt is different. And I, I you you would hope that you don't have any butts. But I know for a mm. fact that there are no butts when you mm. when you talk. I'm about also you have me triggering when I'm thinking about right like. Again, I'm tr- I'm thinking about us as an artist in that context, and I think, kill your darlings, and how we get attached to things that we give birth to as artists, and we can't let go of them because we love them. Mm-hmm. That's another subject for another day, but it's very Absolutely. interesting that there are some parallels with things that yes. came creatively out of you, even that you feel like, I didn't even really make that. It came out. It's gifts God gave me. But then when something gets in the world, you're like, oh, I really like what I did or that, and, and I have it some was, weird, odd ways, yeah. like the way I might with my... With a, with a kid, with my child, that I love my own stuff and I'm blind to the reality of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's kind of a funny parallel. Absolutely. But I, I, absolutely. I need to think more about that because I think there's a connection <laughs> to be had there. But yes, kids, it's amazing. Yeah. And as a child, it also That's helps true. you. You're going to learn to be a better, you're going to become a better actor because now you've got even more dimensions to your life that you're going to see in your own kid. Oh, absolutely. And then as a parent, you're gonna it, it it will it will impact you, yes. Even as a husband. Oh, absolutely. And as a husband, absolutely. Yeah, like All every, your relationships every, every, are altered, and that makes yeah. you even better in your craft. And it's not just acting. If you were a painter, you're gonna realize new things about the way you see the world. And absolutely. Whatever you do, you're going to see that's gonna change you, and it's pretty pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm glad that you're and your son. By the way, I wanted to tell you, but remember, any money that your son makes, <laughs> that your agent gets from, that's supposed to go in the school fund. <laughs> I, oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I, t- I was joking with my wife. I was like, let him pay yeah, for his own exactly. college before he even turns and, two. And the other, <laughs> the other thing you is, uh, yeah, no, th- but- it's we're running out of time, but 
we pick up this we'll, we'd definitely like to have you back and talk more in, the, in at another time but i Absolutely. i'd like to talk Absolutely. about too like what do you feel is comfortable with having your kid go into the business because i told my wife when when mm-hmm. we had fee a lot of people were like she's really cute and my wife is is asian so she's a half asian half white kid mm-hmm. people are like ooh get your kid into commercials yeah, yeah, and yeah. honestly i was just yeah. like no yeah, i've yeah. worked in the business and i don't want <laughs> i don't want her but a lot of people are saying no no you shouldn't say that you should let get exposure to it and i we have very different we might have different opinions on that i would love to have another conversation about that what is it like with your kids as artists when they're really young putting them in because i think that's important that's really a great conversation to have and it takes Mm -hmm. a lot of discernment too and and just really quickly my wife and i you know i I, it took some some coaxing but i truly believe that you should not Mm -hmm. force your kid to do anything and so i just feel like right now this little dude (laughs) you point a camera at him and he looks directly (laughs) into the lens right and so my thing is while he's young and doesn't quite know what's going on like we're there but the moment in which he can express his Mm -hmm. uh uh, feelings about it then then (laughs) it's then it's different yeah you know it's great there's a lot to talk about in there let's definitely plan a second one we've got a lot of questions uh especially some even more uh more weighty subjects too we just run out of time so yeah yeah thanks Thanks. so much for listening thanks everybody thanks for stopping by all right right. see you thank you thank you lawrence all right bye 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 Bye. (laughs) 